Hello everyone, it's Wes Boss here. In the last video, we took a look at how we could use flex direction uh, to create ourselves a row of co um, content or either a, uh, a column of content. Or we use flex direction to uh, reverse them entirely. We also looked at how we can use the order property on each individual item to be able to reorder it. As you can see, we have one to through 10 here, but it's not exactly so visually when we display it here. So today I wanna to take a look at applying width and height to each of our elements and uh, seeing how Flexbox is able to work with us in that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete all of these orders that we've done here. And I'm going to set this back just to row, which is the default. And a refresh, you can see that our flex value of one is uh, proportionately giving the space to each of these 10 flex elements right here. So in order to uh, kind of simulate environment of being in a web app or in a web page, uh, I wanted to uh, set a hard width and a hard height or uh, a height and a width on the wrapper that is around here. Uh, because most of the times you're going to be using Flexbox to uh, layout items that are within your application. So to do that, I'm going to say width equals, uh, let's say 80%. And then I'm going to do a height of uh, 600 pixels. And I'm just going to put a border of uh, 10 pixels solid black, just so I can see where the, the wrapper is starting and ending. Uh, I'm also going to do a margin uh, zero auto, just so I can center it in the page. So give that a refresh, everything's looking good. Uh, we're now constrained to 80% um, of our browser. So you can see as we resize this now, uh, we are taking up 80% of the wrapper instead of the browser. So what I wanted to look at now was this each individual box. So with Flexbox, when you want your items to kind of stack side by side, uh, or uh, take up the room that you need, uh, we need to apply a min width and a min height. So I'm going to say min width of 25% and min height of, let's say, 100 pixels for now, just see where we're at. Um, and the reason we're using min here is because if the content of these boxes is larger than uh, what it needs or than it is, if it needs more than what it is, then uh, they should be able to expand and Flexbox should be able to accommodate uh, the rest of them for that. So I'm gonna pop this up here and give it a refresh. And whoa, what happened? So what happened was the height of everything stayed the same, but these got a lot bigger and now we're scrolling side to side. Uh, everything kind of spilled outside of the wrapper. Now, if you're used to normal uh, floats in web design, you're probably thinking, well, well, we can just float these suckers left and they should break down underneath. We should one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten underneath that. Flexbox is a little bit different in that regard in that we need to set a wrap on the parent. So let's go back up to this wrapper here. I'm just going to move this down so we keep our flex properties together. And this new one is called flex dash wrap. And we are going to say wrap. Uh, there's a few other options that we have here. Um, if you are ever uh, looking for a really good reference for all of the available options in Flexbox, uh, CSS Tricks has a excellent, excellent page here that just dives into uh, all of the possible options for uh, Flexbox. I definitely recommend keeping that one bookmarked as it's a really, really handy reference uh, and it seems to be always up to date. So what we did is we said flex wrap wrap and what's going to happen now when I refresh is that now we are getting our 400 pixel div. They, we get to four because they're 25% each and now it wraps onto the next line because it's no longer spilling out to the end. And this is the really, really nice thing about Flexbox is that we have nine and 10 left and they don't just kind of stop right here. They realize that they have the rest of the room. So they are going to uh, 
uh, by default span all the way across. Now we can totally change that if we wanted to uh, and Flexbox would be able to uh, accommodate for that. We're going to look into that in further videos. What I really want to show you now is the difference between row and column. So right now we're set as row, flex direction row, and the numbers go from left to right and they break on to the next one. If I were to shut, set that to column, give it a save, look what's going to happen here. So we go one, two, three, four, refresh. Now we go in a column wise where we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This layout wasn't really possible before in CSS unless you had two separate divs. Generally what would happen is you would float them left and you would get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But now they stack on top of each other. When they run out of room, we're going to pop up to the next line here and, and everything looks good. The reason these are totally evenly distributed is because I actually put a height of 600 pixels. If we took that height off, they would all stack vertically because it's unlimited height for them. Uh, oftentimes when you're working in an application though, you, want, you don't want to have users scrolling. So you're going to set a uh, either a pixel height or 100% height or something like that. Uh, if I were to bump this up to maybe something like uh, maybe 750, and refresh, you'll see that because we have a min height of 100 pixels, we're able to fit seven of them. We have 700 pixels to work with. And the browser knows that, hey, we got an extra 50 pixels here, so it's gonna distribute it evenly between all of these guys here. That's the beauty of Flexbox. And then it takes the rest, eight, nine, and 10, and distributes them evenly between all of them. So that's wraps for now. Uh, what we're going to look at in the next video is um, looking at when we resize or when there's extra space available, uh, what does that look like to allocate the size? We're going to look at something called the flex basis, which is ideally what size it should be, uh, and then look at two other items called flex grow and flex shrink as when you have more room than you need and when you have less room than you ideally need.